this could have been prevented. I'm sorry to say this, but this, this is how I feel. He had that near death experience just a few months ago. Back in July, I was almost dead. If you in this fitness world and you training, don't just think, okay, I'm good. Go get yourself checked out, get everything checked because I didn't realize what was going on inside me until they actually went in and looked. The reason I'm making this video is because I want to urge all of you to be as careful as you can about your health. So for those who don't know Greg Deschett, so you see it says IFBB Pro, that's the International Federation of Bodybuilders. He's had several world records, I think deadlift and bench press, depending on, I think on his age and height and weight. Another person who has elite genetics, he himself has admitted to using performance enhancing drugs in the past. He says he no longer uses them. He's significantly smaller. As jacked as he is now, he's significantly smaller. So again, that's what I'm saying about elite level genetics. Plus once you use those things, you still maintain some of the stuff when you get off of it. Coach Greg, and I have some very sad news to report. Cedric McMillan has passed away. In hearing the news, I thought I would be shocked. I was trying to go through my emotions saying, how do I feel? And the emotion that kept coming up was, this could have been prevented. I'm sorry to say this, but this, this is how I feel. He had that near death experience just a few months ago. Back in July, I was almost dead. Like literally notify you're next to Ken. And so against his doctor's advice, he's continuing to train, packing on the muscle, all for what? To compete in bodybuilding. Well, ever since I tried to compete at the Legion show in Nevada back in October, I've been having some issues with my stomach. And so on February 28th, Cedric spent five minutes going over his current health problems. He had a hard time swallowing food, water, trying to keep it down, was literally hiccuping all day and night, had so much problem, medications and so on. Anytime I try to eat, even drinking water, it come back up. Nothing want to stay down. And consider he was going through this while prepping for a show, throwing up half the food. I went to the doctor again. I've been going to the doctor throughout, but they, they recommended that I wouldn't try to do the show. Four weeks out, I'm looking pretty good. And then I kept going till two weeks out and I was dropping some fat, but it kept going and I, I decided to drop out. If I want to continue to do it, especially long term, I need to try to be smart. So this is me taking a 50% stubborn, 50% smart step and uh, not doing this show. The intelligent move is got to retire. You got to quit. You got to know when it's too much. When your health is in danger to this extent, it's an obvious no brainer. You can't keep doing it. Does this mean I'm supposed to retire when I'm fucking sick all the time? So we can convince ourselves that PDs had nothing to do with this, that it's some other condition, some underlying issue. But if you really think that PDs had no influence on this whatsoever, then you're living in imagination land. No one motherfuckers on the internet going to be talking shit, wondering how family and friends going to feel. You know, Cedric ain't no bodybuilder no more. And he brought this up and this really makes me sad. He says he's reading comments on the internet. People saying, well, if Cedric retires, then, well, he hasn't accomplished this. And he hasn't done enough. You know, just worrying about all that kind of stuff. Plus, still feeling in myself that I got something I need to try to prove to somebody and still wanting to do the thing I love. And not only that, he has a contract. He has to provide a certain image. They're paying him to look a certain way to sell products. And so when your livelihood depends on how you look, very hard to just walk away from the sport. And when you ain't, you know, when you're not in the shape to where you can really represent the company and bring in money, you know, they'll throw your ass away, right? And, you know, I've been worried about that, but... And you can debate me and say bodybuilding may not have had anything to do with his death. He would have had this anyway. I personally don't believe that. And no, I'm not a doctor. I don't know for sure. But I can tell you this. Is this not the wake-up call that you need? So I think things are starting to look up. I just need some more time, man. I've seen so many deaths in the last few years. It's overwhelming. And I'm trying to send a message to be careful. And it's extremely sad that this would happen to such a great guy. Everyone loves Cedric. I previously made a video on Cedric saying, I hope he switches to classic physique, that he downsizes and that we can see him battle it out for the title against Chris Bumstead. Everyone will want to see this. But yet a bodybuilder wants to be as big as possible. They just get addicted to it. They yeah, you know, that's what I'm talking about, where a lot of guys start going to the gym because they're skinny or they're fat and they want to transform, right? And then somewhere along the way, lose sight of the original purpose, right? 
hey, I want to not be skinny or wimpy or I don't want to be fat. And then just keep going and going. And there's never enough, never enough muscle, never enough size, never enough this. And just keep going and going and going. And the entire lifestyle is kind of wrapped up in this image. I can draw an analogy with chess. Grown men and women that their lives are so wrapped up in this thing is like to the exclusion of everything else. They're just so wrapped up in this thing. They just need water and food just to stay alive, you know. But the main thing they care about is this chess. Sometimes they can be or could have been very successful in other endeavors, but all their energy is going to this thing. It's almost kind of obsessive in a sense. Sometimes with the body transformation stuff, I feel as if it is similar. Some of these guys and ladies, they can never look good enough. I mean, most people would quite happy to look a fraction of these people, but they themselves are not happy. And it's almost like this line where Daryl Hannah in the movie Wall Street, the original Wall Street, where she says that the only thing worse than being poor is being going from poor to rich and back to poor. And I can't imagine looking, going from Clark Kent to Superman and then back. And I think this is what struggles a lot of these guys. Getting to that level and having to go back. You know, it's kind of like a car, right? You hear noises in the car before something breaks. It just doesn't break overnight. So this guy had warnings. Some of these other guys have had warnings. You know, the labs are looking bad or they, they come down. You know, you see all these interviews and they're like, ah, oh, they're going to try again and do this and do that. And yeah, Greg Deschett is one of the few ones at least that I can be aware of on YouTube that he's totally on off and he said hey trying to make sure he lives to 80 90 or what have you quality of life they need to have that size that mass and in the search of being the biggest leanest person on the planet of course it's inevitable that you're going to use and abuse PDs ignoring the doctor's advice and then I spent about four weeks trying to get ready while I'm still sick so that lets you know how how damn crazy we are you know and so Cedric says that he got the virus that I'm not going to name the C word, got it back in 2020. And he believes that that potentially is what's causing his heart failure and heart problems. I mean, that could well be, but I'm no doctor. So many of these guys, when they pass away, it's from, and ladies too, for that matter, there's at least two, I think, passed away within the last two years, female bodybuilders, some kind of cardiac, cardiac type situation. While the C word, it definitely can impact things during the, this pandemic. But that other stuff, you know, there's no doubt about, I mean, that stuff just takes years off your life, right? It's like smoking. It takes years off your life. At, at the end of the day, it takes years off your life. I didn't start to have any issues until April 2021. Whether or not it's a result of the C word or not, I'm convinced that PDs had something to do with this. Also, with most athletes, they have an enlarged heart. He speaks about how he had an enlarged heart. You don't get an enlarged heart just out of nowhere, right? You ever notice some of these guys have these huge veins, biceps, it's like permanently, even if they're at rests. When they wake up, the vein is as a, it's the body adapting to all the stuff going through them, right? Because they're pumping so much blood, it needs blood flow. So usually when you see veins, the one down there, I forget what it's called, you know, it's due to leanness. But even some of these guys, when they're not that lean, they still have these huge veins that are up there because so much blood is pumping. Their hearts are enlarged, putting a lot of stress on the body. I used to do drag racing. I had a drag racing license. You know, you modify a car, right? When you increase the power to a certain point, you have to increase the support structure, right? Whether it's your suspension or the gearbox, you blow, blow the gearbox. Except with your body, you kind of just have what you have and your body does its best to adapt with the heart blood vessels, etc. But there's only so much it can do. There's only so much it can handle. You put too much power there, too much horsepower, eventually something goes kaput. You know, when you look at race cars, right? Those engines don't last. I mean, in Formula One, I watch Formula One, each team is allocated several engines for the season and they use them. Imagine in your car, if you were to change out your engine several times in a year, trying to get as close to the edge as possible for that engine to fail because they're trying to win. They're all trying to win. So when you're that close, you're flying that close to the sun, you know, you may like Icarus. You know what happened with him. Taking steroids, training like this, going to enlarge the heart. Bodybuilders who are using PDs, even in lower doses, it's not safe. That's a key part there. There's this myth out there that, oh, if I use the right dose, just because you read a book on flying a fucking plane doesn't make you a fucking pilot. You didn't go to airplane. You didn't go to flights. You're not a damn pilot. You're not a doctor, right? I don't care how much stuff you read on the internet. And so if anything, if you do in fact get that virus, does that make not even more sense to not abuse PDs? Um, my wife was with me, um, but it was, I was out of here, seriously. But I didn't see no white light, so I don't know if I was that close, but looking at me from the outside, I was that close. Do you want to be the next Cedric? Likeable guy, everyone loves the guy, taken away from us far too young. He's sick, 
loses the weight, ignores his doctor's advice, and has to put on 30 pounds. How do you think he's doing that? Has to put on 30 pounds. Not 30 pounds of fat, it's 30 pounds of muscle. Do you think he's doing that 100% natural? Imagine the toll, the strain that that puts on the body. Those of you who are taking PDs, you all know how risky it really is. You have to see the risk. And so please, I urge you to go see your doctor, get your blood work done, do everything and anything to be proactive with your health. And so he's doing the guest posing show, flexing the biceps, and people are like, wow, you look incredible. And he's thinking, no, I feel, I feel small. Why didn't you tell me that before I did my routine? I feel small. And so perhaps this body dysmorphia, this disassociation, what your body actually looks like leads to people wanting to use and abuse PDs to get to the elite level. Yeah, and people think of body dysmorphia, they usually think of people incredible, for lack of a better word, right? But you can have it. You can have a six-pack body, but you don't have a six-pack mind. I think ladies can probably relate to this more so than guys, where a guy may look very handsome, but if he doesn't have something inside of him to go and talk to the girl, he just looks great, but he just can't come or go over there and say something to her. And the woman is thinking, doesn't he like me or what's going on? So you may have a six-pack body, but you don't have a six-pack mind. You look about the biggest and best I've ever seen you. Okay, well, that's kind of crazy because when I got off the plane, I immediately said, oh my God, I feel like I'm small. And when I walked into the hotel, the dude that picked me up at the airport, I said, shit, he bigger than me. I, what? <laughs> and so do you see this the way I do as I'm watching Cedric speaking on stage? He's funny, charismatic, and so on. But do you see if you really read between the lines, does he really like the way he looks? Why is he abusing PDs? Why did he not downsize after this near-death experience? He could have literally been in the Mr. Olympia in classic physique without all the huge muscles and competed against Chris Bumstead. But do you not think it's safer, healthier to compete at a smaller size with less PDs than at a larger size? Cedric is huge. He probably could have gone on HRT and HRT alone and competed in classic physique and been That's hormone replacement therapy. Therapy for those of you who don't know what he's talking about when he says HRT, otherwise called TRT, testosterone replacement therapy. In the Mr. Olympia, but he didn't want it to. Wants to be the biggest and the baddest. And as you get older, it gets harder. Years and years and years of strain on the heart and your organs. When is enough going to be enough? And in case you think I'm being hypocritical, Coach Greg, you abuse steroids. Who are you to talk? Yeah, I did for 10 years. But what am I doing now? Right now, 140 milligrams a week HRT prescribed by my doctor. That's right, prescribed by my doctor because the doctor feels I need that dose more than I don't need it to be healthy. And I eat healthy, I have a very good diet. I also do a lot of cardio as cardio is so important for your heart health. I also get regular blood work. I'm being proactive. I'm trying to get all the tests needed to ensure my health and safety. And because I'm just saying, oh, I'm 300 pounds, I'm just, that's why I can't breathe so well, right? But it wasn't that, it was the underlying issue that took that long to manifest itself. So, and so is it in fact the underlying issues of getting the C word that a year later it's affecting his heart? Or is it the fact that he's 300 pounds? I believe a little of both. I think it's probably both. And so if you had an underlying issue that makes you more susceptible, would you not do everything and anything even more so to ensure you're healthy? You know, if you're in this fitness world and you're training, don't just think, okay, I'm good. Go get yourself checked out, get everything checked because I didn't realize what was going on inside me until they actually went in and looked, so. And so Cedric himself says, enough of us are dying. Please go get checked out. And so it's the purpose of this video the reason I'm making this video is because I want to urge all of you to be as careful as you can about your health. You might be thinking, it's not going to happen to me, but how many people can it happen to before you start thinking, this actually could happen to me? And I'm going to be honest, when I was in my 30s, early 40s even, I thought, I'm such a fit guy. I used to do triathlons when I was a kid. I eat healthy. It won't happen to me. Became into my 40s, saw all this going on. And so why do you think I haven't competed in several years now? Why do you think I'm only on HRT? And those of you thinking, oh, he's probably using trend and all this stuff. He's just lying. Do you really think that I'm going to lie? What benefit would that be to me? I want to live the longest, healthiest life possible. And if I'm lying, do you know who the biggest person I'm lying to is? Myself. You can lie to everyone else in the world. Everyone can believe you. But if you're lying to yourself, convincing yourself that everything you're doing is of no ill consequence, 
then the biggest loser in all this, it's you. Because you are determined to transform your body, you made it to the end of this video. To get more tips about how to look great and feel even better, check out one of these videos you see on the screen. I'm sure you'll enjoy them. So later's my massive. Me now. For those who don't speak Jamaican Patois, that's goodbye, my people.